Hey guys, so today we are taking a look at some more kit and a different style of loadout. Recently you guys have enjoyed these styles of video where I talk you through some of the equipment you see me using on the field, where you guys can buy it and my opinions on it. So in my recent CQB videos you did see me using this helmet. This is a different style helmet to my usual Team Wendy setup that you've probably come used to seeing. And now I've also been sent this. This was sent to me by the guys at UK Tactical. This is a Warrior Assault setup which is a pretty common and very popular uh, make in the UK. A lot of airsofters do use Warrior Assault. It is actually a real steel company. There are guys out there in some pretty dangerous places who have put Warrior Assault kit to the test. It is a mixed bag. Some guys like it, some guys don't. I personally have run the Rickass and the DCS in the past. I had no problem with them. They were very strong pieces of kit. They ran well. So today we'll be taking a look at some of the latest stuff out from the guys at Warrior Assault and if you would like to check any of this kit out, it is available on UK Tactical. So as you can probably tell by the title, I have called this a high speed loadout and that is kind of a bit of a mick take, but there is some genuineness to that because this kit is very lightweight and it is quite diverse and you can switch it out quite easily. So as you can see, we've got two pieces of kit in front of me, but they actually come together to make one whole kit, which you can probably see in some of the photographs I've got playing throughout this video. This is actually called the Warrior Assault CPC, which not to be confused with the Cry Precision CPC, that stands for, or this stands for at least, the Covert Plate Carrier. And that is because, as you can see, it is very slick. There's no molly to this, it's very low profile, it's very lightweight. Of course, being a real steel plate carrier, you can put real plates in here. I have medium PTS uh, replica plates in, which I use in my uh, JPC, my CPC. They're great plates, they give the, any kind of plate carrier good strength and kind of good shape. But obviously you can put whatever kind of plates you want in this, training plates or anything like that. I know a lot of guys actually buy these because there's nothing, you know, there's no molly on it and stuff. When they're doing weight training or running, and, you know, where they want to have the weights for that extra bit of uh, training, they do buy these because again, they're pretty low profile. So that's why it's called the covert plate carrier. It's the kind of thing that if you had it in black, you'd probably see somebody wearing it under a suit if they were working undercover or stuff like that. So if you are trying to build something slightly different for a loadout or want something that's a little bit different, this is going to be maybe something up your street. But what it does have, while it doesn't have molly on the front or the back, you have actually got on the cummerbund here, you've got some pretty nice tight pouches. So I'm going to take some stuff out here now to give you an example. A standard M4 magazine fits in these just fine. Getting them in is a little bit slow. I would recommend trying to put mags back in this in the middle of a firefight. It's more pull the mag out, use it, and when you finish, use a dump pouch. But You've got two on the side here that can fit magazines just fine. Because of the, uh, the stretchy material, I can fit you know single pistol mags in there and they stay in there fine. You can put tremor grenades in there, radios, stuff like that. So it's the kind of system you see a lot of guys do as a modification to the JPC. They buy the JPC, they remove the molly panels from the side and they put a stretchy cummerbund in. So it's a very similar system to the modification you see to the Cry Precision JPC. Now, of course, if you're wanting to run in a big game and carry lots of equipment like this, having just this isn't going to cut it, of course. So that's where this comes into play. Now, this is the uh, chess rig that you can buy separately. This is a, set, a chess rig you can buy by itself, but you can buy this as a combination where, of course, you put the plate carrier on, you've got that protection there of the plates, which in airsoft I know is kind of superficial, more for appearances, but of course, if you are using it for real steel, you've got that protection. And then you can simply strap this over your shoulders, click it around your back, and as you can see again in the photographs uh, I've used it in these videos, you've now got all your equipment. Now, recently we did some Milsim events where we were using chess rigs, we were playing OP4, and I didn't have this at the time, I was using a big Chinese Type 56 plate carrier um, chess rig, it was very cumbersome, very heavy. This is a lot better. What we've got on the front here, we've got enough, I mean, to say it's so small, you can hold a lot of magazines. I've got six mags in here right now. You could technically put more mags in the sides if you wanted. So you've got these tight pouches on the front here. These are the type that came out, I think, last year from Warrior. Again, it's the kind of type that are quite difficult to get mags in. I would recommend running this system without a dump pouch because they are a bit slow to get in. But to get them out, nice and quick, nice and easy. And on the back, you have the taco style with the, uh, the bungee, which you can kind of hook over the top, which I don't think you really need, especially if you do have mags in the front. I'll do a quick a quick test for you now. Let's see how well this goes. Nothing here is bungeed down. And uh, yeah, your mags aren't going anywhere. You're not gonna be dropping mags as you're sprinting across open ground. So you can hold quite a few mags in there, but you've still now got 
these pouches here, they're kind of multi-use pouches. You can fit TOMRs in there, you can fit radios in there with space for your antenna to stick out. You can fit your food in there, your Mars bars, whatever you want. So there is quite a lot of space there, but it's still very low profile. It's not big, it's not bulky. And of course, that is why it works in line with the uh, covert plate carrier. So when you are using them together, as you can see, you do have this Velcro patch on the front here. And on the back of this, you can simply just pull away this uh, Velcro section. And when you've got this strapped over your shoulders, you can just then Velcro this. A bit neater than I'm doing now, but you can Velcro this onto the front. And you kind of have then a conventional plate carrier. You've got your protection and you've got all your pouches, as well as the pretty neat Cumberland uh, pouches along the side, which I found are very useful. Like These to me are actually probably the most selling point for this plate carrier or this design, because this is something anyone who buys a JPC these days normally does the GMR style Cumberland mod to switch out that molly for these stretchy elastic bands. So um, that is something I think is very cool on this plate carrier. And as I said, it's something a little bit different. You can get this in various colors. You can get it in black, which if you get it in black, because of the style of it, it's almost like the um, Black Hawk Down style carriage you saw the, the, the Delta guys use in 1993. So it's that kind of style. It's obviously not the same, but it's it's that kind of look and appearance with the, the lack of molly and the kind of profile of it. So I've never run anything like this before. I've never had anything like this before, which is why when the guys at UK Tactical approached me and asked if there's anything I'd like to review, I wanted to take a look at this. You're used to me running my kind of standard JPC, CPC, Molly style equipment. And I do get a lot of questions from you guys saying, you know, I want to be different. You know, everyone's running the same kit these days. So, but normally the main reason people are running the same kit is because it's good kit. So I was trying to find something that's different, but still, you know, pretty versatile. And I like this a lot because, you know, if you're going to a game where you want to play NATO, you can run it like this. It looks pretty NATO-ish, obviously, not trying to run any, you know, exact replications of anything. Or if you want to run OP4, uh, and you just want to run a chess rig, or you want to be lightweight and very quick, high speed, whatever you want to call it, you can just run this. You can put a field shirt on, bang this on. You can even put, you know, a jacket over it. You can still reach your mags very easily, and it's very lightweight. It's very simple. There's nothing to the back of it, so... I am quite impressed with this. It's a piece of kit that I may not use in every single game because of course I do like my setup of my CPC. But if I am playing OP4 or playing something of a different role, this might be something I try out. So if you would like to find out more about this, I will leave it linked in the description below. And now we're gonna take a quick look at my helmet setup. So putting this to one side, this is my airframe setup. Now, I still run my Team Wendy. Of course, my Team Wendy is a real Team Wendy. It's got the real Wilcox shroud. At the moment when we're playing night games, I'm using my night vision. I am using my Team Wendy, or I will be, because of course you don't want to be running real night vision on a replica shroud. At the moment, this has got a replica shroud. Um, but what this is, this is the TMC airframe in large. And I have had an airframe sent to me before, and it was that bad. Uh, I won't mention the name of the, the make, but it was that terrible that I didn't do the review, because you know I don't want to be reviewing trash stuff for you guys. So the guys at Weapon762 sent me the large uh, airframe by TMC. The shell is actually, I'm pretty impressed. The weight of it and the thickness and the strength of the shell is pretty impressive. And with that, I bought the TMC Cry Cover, which I have a lot of guys in the know who've seen pictures ask me, is that the Cry Cover? Which for me, instantly has uh, kind of justified this cover. It kind of convinces most people it's only 25 pound. This is a kind of cheaper helmet build. I know my Team Wendy review to build that full setup is over a thousand pounds or so, if not two thousand pounds with the night vision. So this is, you know, kind of a budget build. The helmet, I think, is 60, 70 pounds. The helmet cover is 25 pounds. This is the replica Wilcox shroud you can get for, I think, 30 pounds. And we compared this to my teammate Fles's real one. And apart from being a bit stiffer, which isn't a bad thing, we were saying, using a lanyard, of course, for safety, I would, for a little while, probably trust to run night vision on this if it was lanyarded so if anything failed, it didn't drop. But you know, it's strong, it actually clips uh, night vision in pretty successfully. I'm not recommending it, but I'm saying, it, it, you know, you probably could run night vision on that. And on the back, I am running my replica um, strobe. I've got the moment, the battery pack that comes with the PBS 31s, which is just a, an aesthetic thing. I do have PBS 31 replicas, which I use for photographs and stuff. And of course, I have my real um, Peltor XP headset, which I don't have the rail adapters for for this. The red adapters for the Team Wendy, are, of course, are different. But I like the look of this, a bit more low profile rather than having the kind of horns that you get from the, uh, the adapters. By just having it under the helmet, on the band, it's nice and comfy. 
And overall, I do like the look of this helmet. I'm going to be running this at different games because I do like that profile and that look of this helmet. So if you want to build something like this, you can probably build this setup for, I'm going to say, under £200, which I don't think is too bad. That's excluding the Peltor headset. I'm going to, the Peltors are under pounds Let's say with the Peltors, about £300 for this build. So it's pretty cool. If you would like to check it out, again, I will leave links to Weapon 762 in the description below to check them out. And that is about it for today, guys. So if you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and a comment down below. And Joe Berry, if you're watching this video, please respond to my email. You won yourself a £600 gun and we still haven't heard back from you. So you won the charity raffle and we've not heard a single word from you yet. So uh, please get in touch. But in the meantime, guys, thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.